Lord name. say it's a worry-free philosophy. It's a philosophy to live a worry-free life. And so we are looking at what could also be called the antidote for worry. We said the first thing we try to do is to define what worry is or what the term or worrying means. And we said, of course, that to worry is to torment yourself or oneself or self-inflict suffering from disturbing thoughts. So one who is worrying is tormenting their own self. They are inflicting suffering upon their own self because of what is taking place in their mind. That's why Jesus said, take no thought off. And the Greek word there is the word for worry. So that is one definition. Or it means to think about something or a problem or to think of the worst that you, that gives you an unpleasant feeling about the situation. So you are thinking about a problem situation and you are thinking about the worst thing that will happen about that situation. Of course, we said if somebody called you 12 o'clock at the night, Wow, you begin, to have some, you, you begin to have some problems in your mind. And we also said that the word for worry is, you know, language in its original form, it, 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 were words that this describe, give you a picture of something. So they say a picture paints a thousand words, but really language paints a thousand pictures. And so one of the words, in the old English, really has to define worry as a depictor is to seize by the throat with the teeth and mango, shake and mango. So you get a picture of a lion or a pit bull holding, <laughs> well, a lion and a spray, I wouldn't say a pit bull and a spray, but holding this animal and it's it's teeth you know it's holding by the throat and it, and it, and it's just shaking it and, and 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 that's what worrying the picture of worry it is like you are held by the throat and you are suffocating and you are being shaken the the greek picture is one that is a person hanging suspended in the air it, it's, it's like you know, how you hang somebody in the Western days and how people do hang themselves. You put a rope around it and you keep the person hanging in the air. And, they, uh, and of course, they, they are wiggling because they are being, the life is being choked out of them. And that is the picture of worry. Worry chokes you. It cut off <laughs> your air supply. Or it means to be harassed repeatedly or to be bitten repeatedly or to be snapped at, you know. So you think about a mosquito, and uh, that's what I use. You think about a mosquito always bothering you. You can't sleep because this thing is born. You think about being bitten, bitten all the time. That is the picture of worry. So worry will rob you of your health, worrying will rob you of the beauty and enjoyment of life. You know how much people, and I was sharing that with, 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 with a friend of mine called me yesterday. And he said, you know, he's in a case where, and, and of course the devil is, you know, well, mashing up families today. And, um, you know, he said, you know, his situation is where, of course, he has an infectious disease, one of those STDs, because of his lifestyle. Uh, and and, 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 and his, his wife, gone, 
he have bills to pay. He have a, he have, they have a son. And, um, you know, <laughs> you have all kind of worries. I mean, it, it, it's a worrying situation. So, um, we live in a, so, so worrying, so he will, he, he, he's every day, there's a point I want to make, every day he's going through his, his life, rubbing him of joy. You know, when you worry, really, you, you are rub yourself of, <laughs> you rub yourself of that day, and it is said that you rub yourself minus two years from your life. I received a very interesting um, diary or, or, or planner from Jalice and their company. And on the back of it, it has, uh, I forget the brain, but it has, a, you can measure your life expectancy. And he said, that one insurance, we can't this. That was insurance com companies do. When they ask you all them questions, I don't know, uh, let me not go there. <laughs> you can measure. Your life expectancy, it, it, the book says, from where you live. If you live in the city, if you live where smoke, uh, 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 I don't know, not, not smoke, but, but, but uh, um, uh, fumes and carbon monoxide, all these kind of stuff, minus about two, two years from your life. Smog, as, as, as the bright fellow said. But... It, 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 according to the work you're doing, minus two. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I'm just giving the average. I can't remember it, you know. So they said two alone, but it might be one like that. It said if you're worrying, you're the minus two, uh, minus as well. And according to your age, your age, <laughs> you're the minus some as well. So worrying, Jesus said, don't worry. That's what he thought. He said, don't worry. And we said last week, he said, don't worry for, for the first reason. Because he said, worrying is, is, is an exercise in futility. Worrying does not change anything. One man says, worrying will keep you busy. It's like a rocking chair. It keeps you, of course, movement doesn't mean progress. So, it just keep you uh, rocking, but you're not going anywhere. So, the Bible said it is vain to set up late, rise up early to eat the bread of sorrows. So, worrying, also, the, the, another word for worrying is a fret. And the, and the, the psalmist said, fret not thyself. Always fretting. So, <laughs> Christ says, Worrying is an exercise in futility. And so we put, we, we put three tags on that. The first tag is that some people worry about the past. Worrying, and we say, listen, there are four things in life that you can't stop nor change. A spoken word. You can't, you can't stop that. The damage is already done. If you throw a stone, you can't go catch it. It's already done. An opportunity or event that has passed. You can't capture that. And we said, and I said that to you know, help some gullible people who, 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 who church, who, who some of the, you know, people try to milk your money by, sell, by putting, you know, religious, a lot of religious artifacts and all kind of foolishness and tell you, well, you need to buy that and you need to get that and all that kind of foolishness. And we, and we said, you know, <laughs> Jesus in the water, uh, Jesus was baptized in Jordan. So everybody going to Jordan, they had to get some water from Jordan. Jesus baptized in, no, no, Jesus. Jesus, the locality is, 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 of course, Jordan. But the water is not the same. Because you cannot step into the same water twice. So we said, uh, uh, an opportunity doesn't come back. And we said, a moment. This is a moment in time. You see this moment here last week, we had a moment that could never come back. And this morning, there's a moment happening here right now. There's a moment you could never get back. This moment, this hallowed, sacred opportunity for transformation, for deliverance, for turnaround in your life will never come again.
this this particular moment as a matter of fact two seconds ago I can't get back there so he said to, to worry about the past is you're wasting time you can't change it if you did something you can't you can't stop what already happened so don't worry about the past don't worry about even the present Christ said, you worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink. No, no, no. Don't worry about the present. Don't worry about what people, people spend their life worrying about what people say and what people do and what people... You know, no, don't worry about those things. You, you, you have no control over things in life. So I said, I said to, to the brother, I said, listen, um, you, you, you can't make your wife come back. You, know, you have no control over that. You, 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 the thing is, we spend all our life trying to, you can't change people. Not even God could change people if they don't want to change. So why are you worrying yourself about changing people? So you spend all your life worrying and worrying and worrying. So you are losing happiness. Because you're worrying about a situation. You, you, you're you're down, you're depressed. No! Whatever you can fix is the thing. If you can fix it, fix it. If you can't fix it, leave it alone. Put it in the hands of God. What are you worrying about? And then, and then we say we put a tag on the future because a lot of people are worrying about, and that's what Christ said, you know, we worry about the future. And especially in this economic challenging times, you, you, you could find yourself in a place of worry. If your job is a contract one, most of the most of the job this is a contract. You can start a war about when I went my my tenure <laughs> this year will be the whoa whoa what will happen? I, I'm not sure if I, how I'm gonna have bills to pay, have debts to pay, have have mortgages to pay. How am I gonna do that? And if you begin to run with that, I might tell you your mind begin to run. If you begin to run and run and run, and then you say, well, well, no, no, what? After a while, you might just exit from the planet. So we said, of course, before I talk about the futility, I should have told you what Christ talked about the fact of worry. He said, the reality is that people, human beings, worry about legitimate concerns of life. He, Christ said, we have legitimate concerns or needs in life. And I said, and I said, you Maslow did a good uh, work in, in terms of categorizing those things. Because Maslow talked about we have in this pyramid of the hierarchy of needs. He says we have physiological needs, or what we call survival needs. That is to to have food on the table, to have a place to live, shelter, which is also a safety need. But shelter, the air we breathe, these are necessary for survival. And sometimes people are stuck in survival mode. And, and, and let me show how it works. Because when a person is stuck in survival mode, let me tie in that in terms of the fatality of worry. When you are stuck in survival mode, Christ said it, it is fatal to your own spiritual health because you continue to just worry and worry and it affects your spiritual life. So then we have, of course, these... Psychological needs, self-esteem, to feel good about ourselves by achieving something, by accomplishing something. We have the need to belong. I don't care what you say. I don't care, I don't care you may love humanity but hate people. I don't care what you say. But every person has this need to belong. That's why you, people need people. Yeah, somebody said, good preaching. And somebody said, to, somebody says, people who need people are the happiest people in the world. And people who commit suicide are people who have nobody in their corner. You know why? They have nobody to talk to. And if you want to live in your world by your own self, with yourself, listening to your own self, you have nobody to bounce off ideas and thoughts and, and, and stuff on. And God, the truth is, God, you, you, God look at you and he says, you look at, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. We all have this need for friendship. We all have this need for intimacy. 
We have this need to belong. That's why people join clubs. And that's why fellas lie on the block. That's why people join gangs. Because sometimes mainstream society push you out. So uh, 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 all of us who are in that, well, we find comfort in each other. And we have fine friendship with each other. That, that, that is a need, that you, this, the, the social need that every human being has. And of course, we have the needs for safety, for health, to live, <laughs> to, 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 for, to have some money, security when we, when we retire. Thank God for NIS. Otherwise, we're in real trouble, many people. Thank God for Senior, I don't want to say old age pension, but for senior pension. Because if so, oh my goodness, God, if. <laughs> you know, there was a time my father, when he just came to Trinidad, and uh, he, 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 of course, came here as a, a man about 12 years of, uh, you know, 12 years of, 12 years old. Uh, and people worked long ago. The, the, the employer, they, 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 I, I want to work with a contractor. I give them all the money. So they're not paying. In, in, in those days, you know, I know things have changed. I don't think they were NIS yet. But, but, but you, you had, you had some, 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 some um, things that you put your money in the company. My, my father, you know, your money was going into some thing for gratuity, something here, something there, something there, something there. And his, his brother said, nah, me and me want that, man. Nah, I want my money. And when he retired, he's, when, he's, when he couldn't work anymore, you have nothing. Nothing, no, no safety. So that's why, that's why, listen, my friend, I encourage you, join an insurance. I'm serious. No, 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 go this old foolish thing. Insurance is going to take your money. No. Join an insurance. Join one. Kindness, talk to kindness when we finish here. We haven't one yet. But so the thing is, join an insurance. Put down something for your children. You got to run for money. We are getting money. You, oh, God. We are getting money. We are getting money. We are getting money. No. <laughs> Invest somewhere. So that when he reach 18 or you need, wherever, whatever age, you don't have to worry yourself. Where are I getting it from? I, I, I can't beg. So I have to steal or borrow. No! The security is there. We all have that need to be secure, to be safe. That's why you, you, you burglar proof your, your, your house. Security need. That's why I want the police. We want the police. We want the police. It's for safety. That's why we, I, I, I was talking in the barbershop, um, you know, Friday. We were talking about this need. People have a security. So that's why a man will buy a gun. But the, the thing with that, if you don't have control, because somebody mash your call, you're going to shoot them. That's why the young man will take, the young man will carry those who have been bullied in school. So check your, your son's bag or your daughter's bag. They might take the ice pick or, or because somebody gave them a problem in school. They, they have to feel safe. Not all of them are bad. It's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a need and a normal, instinctive, intuitive, innate, I don't know how to say it anymore, needed man for safety. For your health, security. So Christ didn't, Christ didn't expand the whole thing. He talked only about the basic, but it goes to all those things about your health, your well-being. And sometimes we are worried about our health because we went to the doctor yesterday and doctor said. And I'm saying to you now, it's a concern for self and others. And I want to say, I want to put in a plug here. We, we, we need to, oh goodness God. There are some of our people who need, they're, they're struggling with their health. There are some of our people, and I, I, I will say that in a, in a closed meeting, but, but, but we, we, some of our people who need money to pay a doctor, to get a surgery, safety needs. And, and when you see them, I mean, they're worrying, they're crying. 
So all these are things that is it, it, the world and life. Christ is real. Christ said these are legitimate concern in life. And, 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 and you can reach the point where you are caught up. You are only worrying about life. But he said, don't worry. What kind of man is he saying, Jesus? You don't know. You know how much debts I have? You know he said, no, you don't, have, don't worry. What you're saying, Jesus? He said, because it's futile. I don't think you're worrying going to make you get better, will it? You might send you faster. So what you could do, do. Do what you can. This is the principle I'm putting you. Do what you can. Fix what you can. Do all that you could, possibly could, and leave the rest up to God. I know about the fatality of worry. We talked about it last week. Worrying is very fatal. And we talk about it in terms of your spiritual life. Christ gave the, the when, when he explained the parable about the sow and the seed, he says one of the reasons why the people do not grow in their spiritual experience is because they are cumbered with the cares of life. He said, listen, and I see Mars Law is right. You, 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 know, you, you know, truth is everywhere. Let me tell you something. Don't close your mind. All truths are God's truth. Repeat that after me. All truths are God's truth. Whether it's in science, whether it's in education, whether it is in sociology, all long, long as there is a truth. Because all truths are not found in the 66th book of the Bible, but in detail. Have you ever seen taking vitamin A is good for your sight in the Bible? You ever see that? But isn't that true? One thing I have to about the Bible, the Bible never goes into detail about many things. It just gives you the instruction. It says a man shouldn't lie with a man and a beast. God, God, God didn't tell you whether well, they will get AIDS. God, you see that in the Bible, you will get AIDS? No. But if you obey what God says without unquestionable obedience, you will, you will understand. That's why Christ said you will understand the truth as you do it. Don't try to understand it or conceptualize it in your mind. Obey it and you, then you will understand it. So, Christ said, worrying is fatal to your own spiritual life. So people who are combat with life, he said, the cares of life, they hear the word, they're excited, all of a sudden, they're so caught up in getting this and getting that. Oh boy, I have no time for that. Now boy, and, and, and all of a sudden, that's it. Or you can become a pagan, where you become absorbed, Christ said. You become so absorbed with material stuff that your whole life is, is the pursuit of pleasure and materialism. When you become aware that God has comprehensive knowledge of your needs, he says, your father knows. That is the basis he's talking about. He said, he said your father knows what you have need of. Is that trust this you, though? So God knows everything about you. God knows what's on your mind. In other words, God knows what you need, when you need it, and how bad you need it. He, know, he knows it because he's omnipotent. He's the all-knowing God. But I want to go a little further. I want, I want to run. Be, but because he, 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 he has experience. He has experiential knowledge. It's one thing to have knowledge, you know, by objectivity. Or knowledge by, you know, reading a book. But it's another thing to, to have experienced a thing. And Christ, in Hebrews chapter 4, and, and, and I want to read this. I want to leave those words in your mind. It says, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Through the chapter 5, he said, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, 
Let us hold fast to the confession. He says, for we do not have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let me go to chapter 5. I love, I love how Paul put in chapter 5. Oh, well, Paul has. He says, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now, this is, this is the verse. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant on going astray, since he himself is also subject to weaknesses. The point is because of the incarnation of Christ. Christ knows human needs because he himself lived here. He was hungry. He know it. He know the need to belong. He the need for companionship. He knows that. He knows your loneliness. That need to have somebody in your corner. He knows that. 